All right, so welcome back to my EU OPS series. Uh, this is my second guest. It is Stephanie. Hello. And uh, so Stephanie was typed as a double feminine INTP. So she's T-I-N-E, consume, sleep, blast, play. Um, her uh, Enneagram type is self press social of uh, 163 with a 259 overlay. So um, first, I'm, we're very curious. Um, how did you get into OPS? Um, yeah, I actually got into it through a friend who was already involved in, uh, well, mostly in Myers-Briggs in general. And she introduced me to somebody who was already an objective personality so I could learn more about it. And then I fell down the rabbit hole and I learned a bunch of stuff, got officially typed about two years ago now. So yeah, I had a lot of time to process interesting all right so then um after you discovered enneagram after ops correct yes okay so mm -hmm. when you discovered enneagram how did that happen and how did you get stuck in it yeah i also um got introduced to enneagram through someone from the ops community who was interested in it already and they messaged me and they already like had a type idea for me. And I was like, oh, snap. So I looked into it and I was like, oh, wow, I love this system, too. So and I feel like they're very um, like uh, complimentary. So, yeah, it's been really exciting to learn both. I think they both have their value. Interesting. I think I think so, too. I think they're both very different, but also very um, they offer different things. So that's it's great that we have two of them. Yes. So, um, all right, so I have a tentative hypothesis, meaning this may not be true. I, I am, I'm going to do this with all my interviews starting from now, um, that I'm going to try to link up your, your lead OPS function with your core Enneagram type, see if they're actually linked. And if it's wrong, then as we're analyzing your Enneagram type, we will see what might actually link with your lead function and your other ones as well. Um, so your lead function in OPS is masculine TI. Yes. And you are core one wing nine in Enneagram self press one wing nine. That's important because your instinct, you achieve your instinct. Your instinct comes before your numbers. Your numbers are how you achieve your instinct. So your self press one. Well, think of it that way. Um, so self press one. Um, with TI. Okay, so we're going to try to link that up. Anyways, I'm just organizing it in my head. Um, all right, so how do you see masculine TI in your um, OPS type? Like, is, it was that, is that very clear for you to see? Uh, yes, uh, I think of it as very uh, step by step and very like uh, self referencing. So it's like my, I guess, truth about life. It's like, first of all, I'm always working on like the narrative of why we're alive and what is good and bad. And even if I can't figure out good and bad necessarily, like right or wrong or what's compatible and what's not, I'm definitely referencing myself. I don't really try to be influenced by other people when I come up with these things because I just feel like it's like unreliable. And it's like if I hear somebody else's conclusion, if I don't understand how they got there, I can't trust it. So. I just like have to do this very slow step by step understanding of like how I guess of what works and what doesn't just because it's too much to keep track of. It's like chaos to keep track of all these like fallacies and I guess other motives that may be subconscious. So it's just like a lot. So I try to slowly build up my understanding of like whatever is objective slowly build up your understanding of whatever is objective. That is very interesting because I, I have heard other people say this and I always see this like TIs, you actually do try to find what is objectively true. It's just like you do it by yourself, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll use, it's like other people are, like reality is data and that needs to be valued and people's reports on their experiences is important. But I guess that there's like a difference between data and information because data is like a point and information is a trend and coming up with trends is where all the leaps can happen. So it's like, I might not agree with somebody's leap, but I'm going to trust the data. 
Hmm. I see. And I'm also seeing that maybe the your double activated ST is adding that level of beta um, physical truth. Yes, it definitely has to be practical or else it's like, what's the point, I guess. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, let's see. So your okay, so like your lead animal is consumed. So we covered the masculine CI part. Now let's dissect and look at the masculine NE. Um how how does that show up? Like do you just like as you're consuming, are you like entertaining different possibilities? Like how does that work? I'm all I, I don't have any, so I'm a little bit um unsure how to ask sure. that well, first of all, it being intuition, I think it's very abstract. Like everything I just said, I didn't give any concrete examples. So uh, it's like all very like broad. And then I also think it helps me to check lots of possibilities. So instead of just being sure about one thing, I almost kind of feel like I'm never sure. Uh, or like there's always a moment where something could change. So I can't get too comfortable and whatever I think is true. So yeah, I guess it's it's almost like this like anxiety of like, I need to make sure I'm prepared for uh, contradicting information. Hmm. Contradicting information. Okay. That's interesting because But okay, so um, can you define information for me in this specific context? Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, going to a sensory example, let's say religion. So uh, if I find a situation or a person who genuinely seems to be struggling with what's supposed to be a religious truth, then I need to question the religious truth if it's supposed to work for people. Because if that truth is the reason we're alive or the reason that we're supposed to do things, then it should work with all types of people in certain ways, at least. Like there's good stress and bad stress or good ways to grow and bad ways to grow. And sometimes how people grow isn't like, uh, or maybe they're not growing from the stress, they're just getting beaten down. And I just wanna know like, why is that? And is it from the actual like belief they have or is it from like uh, some other, like maybe it's a in misinterpretation of that belief. Mm. So that'd be like a contradiction. So like if somebody just innately seems incompatible with this truth, then the truth isn't objective. It's only for certain people. Mm. I see what you're saying. Um, I get what you mean. Like, okay, so like, I guess you're trying to spot when um, something is packaged as if it's a blanket truth, but it's actually just their truth. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, some, that's funny too. Like, I guess, <laughs> yeah, say like, hearing people say like my truth that like really irritates me <laughs> i'm like there is no my truth it's just your opinion then <laughs> because it can't be because the like truth in itself is supposed to be like true if you think it is or not so it's like you either know what it is or you don't know what it is and there is no in between that is so interesting to me because from the fi standpoint when i hear somebody say my truth I'm thinking that they understand that they are an individual and they are analyzing themselves from the outside of themselves. Um, and from that perspective of looking at themselves from the outside, they have gathered this truth. Like this is what seems true based on looking at myself from the outside, which may not be the last time I will create a truth, like a truth, like my best sense of a truth about myself, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like when you're saying it, it's the definition is different in that when somebody claims that they have a truth, they're claiming something about objective reality, not about um, the limitations of their own perspective. 
Yeah, I guess it, it does sound like overclaiming. Uh, yeah, and then saying that it's mine, it's almost like, so you're saying that something that works for you that absolutely doesn't work for someone else is like truth somehow. And it's like, to me, it's more like, that's just a tool, not like the answer, I guess. It's like maybe something works for you or helps you cope with where you're at in your understanding. And that can be a true aspect of, it's like, I think people have pieces of the truth and that helps them grow and feel healthy. And that's why they align with this thing. But that doesn't mean they're at the conclusion or they understand it uh, like to the fullest. Not that anybody does, but I guess just hearing people claim that they do sounds like crazy to me. That's when you say the answer that that really packages it for me because yeah, like it, for the FI side, uh, it's like my truth is just my answer. It's not necessarily a claim, you know. So I, I do mm. see that you guys handle it differently like it's more maybe more serious actually to say to talk about a sense of truth because it's so um real i guess it's more real like more um in this world i guess yeah i know what you mean i hear what you're saying about like uh, it being your answer like it's it's like your conclusion for right now that works for you and it's not necessarily like you're trying to claim something more than that. So maybe it's because you have ST sleep. And so your truth is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think too, being a single decider or a double observer is I feel like when I make a decision, it's like the decision. And I spend more of my time debating on this very serious decision rather than uh, trial and error, I guess. So where I feel like double observers or double or sorry, wait, double deciders are more about like the experimentation. So mm. making multiple decisions and choosing which decision was best with observation, whereas I'm going to observe both ways and then make my decision. So my decision feels way bigger. Oh, that's a really good point. <laughs> OK, so let me ask you about so your second animal, well, let me ask. So I asked you the first two functions of so TI and ND. Now I'm going to create it into consume. So I'm going to ask you about consume. How do you see consume specifically? Um, to me, it's like just needing to understand more all the time, especially with it being a double masculine consume. It's like I will never stop learning and growing about like myself in relation to others because I feel like it's very important. And I think that also kind of connects to Enneagram a little bit with like boundaries, like in uh, being a gut type, knowing where I end and someone else begins. That just seems like a very crucial line for me. And it's mm -hmm. one that I constantly need to learn more about. So as far as like focusing on identity, gathering for self and consume, it's like, I need to know where those are so I can feel peace. So I know if somebody, let's say if somebody crosses my boundary and I set it, it's fair. So that if somebody else is in pain, it's because they crossed a boundary, not me. Whereas if I put the boundary in the wrong spot and I cross their boundary and they're just responding to setting up their own, it's like maybe their response is fair. So mm. it's like my ability to interpret whether I'm stepping on other people's toes or if they're stepping on mine. And with my feminine FE, like <laughs> I need to like rationalize, should I be upset by their feelings or is this me protecting myself in a fair way? Mm. That is very interesting because it does sound like it could be tied to your core one. Yeah, like you're using the TINE consume to analyze boundaries. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I think that's really well worded since, yeah, since Enneagram is more like motives and like how it's like why we do things. And then uh, OPS is like the tool, like the tool that we use to get to that motive. So yeah, I'm using the consume tool 
to figure out my one boundaries. Ah, interesting. Okay. So let's, I'm going to end up dissecting this now. So like in terms of, because, um, one, um, the Enneagram one type is frustration. Um, so do you see any like elements of frustration in your consume? Um, yes, I, was, I always like attributed it to the double masculine, just like being immovable. So it's just like, if I'm in consume mode, I don't want anyone interrupting like <laughs> ever. <laughs> it's just like, I am in the zone. It also takes me a while to get in the zone. Like for example, even if I'm studying for a test, let's say it takes me like an hour just to like get ready, <laughs> like mentally. It's like such a big endeavor for me. And then when I get into it, I can do it for a long time. So, and kind of like lose my sense of place, which I kind of think is like a sleep thing. So my consume yeah. gives me the drive and my sleep kind of makes me able to sit in it. <laughs> so it's just like a, a, a cycle of like, I don't know, being in my head. Hmm. And um, what kind of test do you, like what, what, what do you do at school? Oh, uh, right now I'm in my master's for clinical mental health to become a counselor. Cool, cool. Awesome. So, yeah. That is so interesting because you're INTP and you're in a, you're going towards a field that is like, I, I'm hesitant to say very effy. It's very effy. Yes, or... no, I completely agree with you. <laughs> okay. Yep, I definitely don't think I'm a very common type in this field. <laughs> So that's interesting. I wonder if like the Enneagram typing attracts you to apply your functions for stuff like that. Yeah, I think having a heart three, just like wanting to be. Yeah, I think a combination of like my one core, like being aligned to like what's right and justice kind of thing. And then the heart three of three of wanting to be productive for people, just like. I don't know, wanting to show them the way almost. <laughs> and that's partly a one um, a object relations thing too, like being frustrated with a lack of role model and wanting to be that for people. And just like very movement focused, because I think the gut triad, like the anger, frustration is a very movement oriented feeling. It's just like, you just can't sit around and feel it. You just want to fix it. And that's definitely like an overarching theme of my life. It's so hard for me to like feel other people's pain without wanting to jump in and be like, okay, this is what we're going to do kind of thing. <laughs> so it's like, I'm just, I wanted to get into a field where I could release that frustration of people who want to change because it's very, I guess I'm not very good at waiting for people to change. And it's part of our training to kind of like be beside people, be next to people instead of like forcing them towards a direction. So yeah, because it doesn't really work to just tell people what you think works for them when they didn't come up with it themselves and stuff like that. Mm. So mm, I've heard that. Mm. So um, what uh, social type do you think you are? I think I'm three, although I can definitely see two as well with the responsibility. So, but I think I'm closer to specialist. I definitely don't like, I don't want to be responsible for a broad range of comings and goings. Cause I think that's part of my consumed sleep is like, I just want to narrow down and get focused on something. And I don't want to think about how other people are do. I don't want to think about how other people are doing with it. I just want to be good at my thing and have control over the quality of that thing. So it's like when I become let's say like a manager of something, I lose that control and my ability to be competent, especially because my brain's not good at bouncing around, I guess. Oh, so it like disrupts the focus. And yeah. Like, yeah, unstabilizes. Exactly. Yep. So it just makes me feel incompetent to be in roles that require quick thinking, changing situations like live but I'm much better at focusing on a long-term thing, having time to myself to process and organize and not missing things. Hmm. Interesting. 
this is very interesting because it, it's a very, very specific flavor of INTP, a very specific role, very specific, like everything is specific. Yeah, that's true. So this is really fun, like just analyzing how things are connected. Um, so let's jump to sleep. So before sleep, let's talk about SI by itself. So um, how do you see SI in yourself? And it is your third function, but it's also your third function in your animal stack. So it's like super third. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> super third. <laughs> Yeah, and they say that the third one's your like hobby, and I definitely do think um, it's a hobby for me. Like the things I grew up with, like playing soccer and writing and reading, like those things just have a nostalgia to them, and it's very grounding for me to be in my nostalgia. It just feels like an innocent time to go back to childhood. So, I guess. Um, that's what SI is to me, like nostalgia. And, but although I guess what's hard too is though it is third. So I have my any to argue with it all the time. So I'm always mm -hmm. like adventure and new information or old information and comfort. So it's like comfort versus thrill, I guess, mm -hmm. is what I'm always like having to choose between. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So your SI is feminine. So um, how do you see that part of it? Do you see it like moving around? Um, and you're also core one. So I'm curious, how does the feminine part of your SI interact with that? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, one thing about it being feminine and being core one is the, a feeling of permeability. It's very easy for me to feel emotionally invaded, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. Like if someone is angry or even if there are cars on the road and they're loud, that's really, really irritating to me. And that's, I think to me, that's feminine sensory because I can't establish my own atmosphere in my head. It's like I have to set it up around me. Like, mm -hmm. so if I want to feel peace, it's like instead of, counting to 10, I'm going to set up my candle and my incense and let that come in because it's like, that's what is peaceful to me is like diffusing into the environment, but it's easily disrupted by people and loud noises and that kind of stuff. That is interesting. It feels like the feminine SI is actually your nine way. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, yeah, the diffusion and dissociation. Mm. Yeah, I haven't thought about that. That is curious then, because I wonder if, um, similar to how in OPS, we have our lead animal and then our second animal, and those are different, but they can be used together too. I wonder if in Enneagram, you could have, you know, your mode of using one, and then the second mode of one with nine. Like, I wonder if that makes consume immensely. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And I think one hard thing, like for my type in particular, I always feel like I'm the most of whatever it is. Like I'm a very intense, specific person. And so it's, it, I feel like my type works together with itself very much. Whereas like hmm. other types sometimes have more checks and balances. Mine can just like, it doesn't have as much, I don't know. It just seems like it works together really well to the point where I don't know what's influencing what or, and I can't, my blind spots are pretty hard to see because I'm always very confident in myself and very confident in the decisions I make. And so, yeah, it, it just feels like a very like cohesive type. So I'm just like, like, where does the one start and the nine begin? Because the one for me is also boundaries like that. Because I know they say about the one that like, for example, things have to feel right in a very body physical way. So it's like, um, I don't know, doing healthy things like going for a run and then like um, being near a river. It's like that feels healthy and authentic and to the earth. And there's something about like 
righteousness and like purity that's there for me. So it's like a one thing with that lack of boundary, but then a nine thing with the diffusion, with the peace. Because there are some things that might be peaceful, but don't feel correct. Like maybe for social reasons. So like, for example, alcohol is peaceful, but that doesn't feel like good, I guess. <laughs> and it's not like I really judge it and I do drink, but like it is, it's not the same feeling as some authentic innocence. It's like if my child self can't, wouldn't approve, then I, then it's not the one, mm -hmm. I guess. That's a lot of self press. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There, there's the self press like it's, hmm. it's very connected to like one applied to self press. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's interesting. Uh, and I can definitely see how that like that ends up being your consumed sleep and OPS. So it's like the the one's rules is the NT, and then the sleep is like when it touches with self press or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. So, all right. So now, I mean, you did kind of speak a lot about your sleep, but let's wrap up the sleep part then. Like, how do you necessarily, um, how, how would you best summarize your sleep? Yeah, I think to me, it's just like focus. It's just the ability to have a lot of focus. Like I was an English teacher for like three years. And I could read like 100 essays and still be interested in reading more. I'm just like, oh, look at these quirky kids. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, you just I get immersed in it. Or even if I'm just like sitting at the park, I could just stare at something for a long time and just like think about things. And uh, it's really easy for me to like zone out or if I'm just doing any repetitive behavior like running. It's like it's easy for me to run because. I'm not focusing on every step. I don't really notice. I'm looking at the sky or like the leaves. And then I'm like, oh, wow, 15 minutes went by. Like, that's cool. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I do see some specialized there that you saw. You said you saw you might be a three in the social mm -hmm. place. Yeah. Um, interesting. Hmm. All right, so let's move to your last third, which is really interesting. This this makes you uh, consume sleep blast play, which is a pretty rare um, animal stack. Um, so how do you see that? Like, do you like because that, that that's the first time you start using FE in your animal stack? Um, how comfortable is it to use blast? Um. Hmm. Comfort's an interesting word. Uh, is it like, are you like resisting it or is it like, do you hesitate with it? Yeah, I think the word comfort is something I resist because it feels tricky. Like mm -hmm. comfort doesn't indicate that something is good or bad. So it's like if I'm, I can be uncomfortable with something good and do it a lot because it's good, not because... And like, I, it's like checking in with myself is almost threatening sometimes because I don't want to know because I just, I want to do what's best. So, mm. yeah. And it's like oh, in the wow. end, like, <laughs> oops. Yeah, and I think that's part of my super ego, like stuff in uh, Enneagrammer. I have so much super ego influence. So it's always like the parent, like, do what you're told, do what's right. Like, and I, and, and then with the type one wanting to control like anger and emotions to always come out the correct way or the way that we interpret it as correct. It's like a very tight control on that. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, that's probably more for, uh, when we talk about play last, but, mm. but yeah, so I in, guess as far general, as okay. like, what is blast doing? for you um blast is definitely telling everybody what i went into my hole for two months for <laughs> so like if it's personality stuff if it's mental health stuff i it's like i want to tell everyone that's close to me about it because it's in the end i'm always trying to solve problems that make me feel uncomfortable i guess i can use that word so hmm. 
Like if people are feeling distressed or they're depressed, it's really hard for me to not like, or to look beyond that or to value a day when I see like a trajectory in people. And I'm like, mm. oh, like they're depressed and we're just pretending it doesn't exist kind of thing. It's like, is that okay? It's like, I want to talk about the feelings and talk and like process it and stuff. And it's often like people aren't ready for that or they want to break from it or that. Like there's so much that is involved in why you shouldn't do that. But <laughs> it's like so hard for me to sit back and watch like uh, watch people hurt, especially if I feel like there's a bunch of science and like understanding of that thing and help out there that they probably don't know about and mm. yeah so it's like the more i learn the more frustrated i get that i can't tell everyone right away <laughs> but for anybody who shows any interest i talk all the time about it mm. and so let me see your blast is uh double feminine do you feel like it's um very accommodating is that would that be a good word for it hmm i think i'm just quiet if there's any competition if mm. anyone wants to speak i just stop speaking because i have an extremely hard time like uh fighting that i just feel like weak it's just like yeah, it's not worth it <laughs> mm. even if That's i have things i want to say yeah no, I really like the uh, feminine yeah. blast last. Like I, a lot of the time, people are just like talking. I'm like, okay, well, there's no job here for me. But like, since I'm a one, like a social one, I do want to eventually like pierce through and like try to get my points in mm -hmm. at some point. But it doesn't have to be at any specific moment. It's just at some point I will make an attack. You know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. So, anyways, um. Hmm. And like the SF part, like, do you feel like you're responsible for their physical comforts? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think that's a complicated thing for me because I was raised in a household of SFs. And so it's frustrating <laughs> for me to, to see it in a savior state. But then I see myself doing it all the time and like, dumb ways or or I'm just like triggered by it to the point where I don't want to worry about it like I like to go hiking and stuff and if I'm with someone who is like expecting there to be a bathroom somewhere it's like um like it's just like do what the rest of us do like <laughs> I don't know it's just like frustrating or if they say they're hungry when we obviously can't get food right now it's like why did you say that no I'm just irritated <laughs> i guess and it's like not that they're hungry in itself but it's like i can't fix it so it's like i feel guilty that we're here or wherever we are or something and it's like because i would never say i was hungry if i knew i couldn't get food like i just oh. feel like it's my responsibility so even if i just didn't have time to eat before i went somewhere like or didn't have time to eat before my job. I'm not going to expect anyone to take care of that for me. It's like that was my like uh, choice or overlooking or or it's just like a perfect storm type of day. <laughs> and it's just like that's just how it is. Just feel hungry. <laughs> I don't know. And why put it on other people? Mm -hmm. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. So I guess then the, because it's feminine SF, there's like a, um, it, it can move so much that like you kind of try to deal with it by yourself with the savior masculine consume, I guess. Yeah, I think right? for me, yeah, for me, I kind of like repress the SF and I get annoyed when other people value it. And but also I love like having people over. And when I have people over, I'm like, you want a hot tea? You want another hot tea? Like, is it too hot in here? Do you want a blanket? Like, <laughs> so I'll be like that when I have people over, but it's like, I planned for it. Like I planned to nurture someone. So, but it's like, if we're in a situation in which, uh, like, like I said, like we're hiking and they're like, oh, I'm hungry. It's like, well, we have one snack that we plan to have at this time. And it's like, we're not going to have it ahead of time because then we'll be hungry afterwards. So it's like, why? It's like, what do you want? <laughs> I don't know. So it's like we, it's like we both agreed to go through a certain amount of suffering. So let's just do it. 
I guess, because that's like the point. Or we could have just bought more food before coming out here. And now we know. Mm. That's very interesting. I do see a lot of the um, 259 overlay um, coming out through the blast um, or starting with the blast, I guess, um, or mm -hmm. the okay. whichever way. Um, huh. We will talk about that when we get there in the Enneagram portion of this interview. Um, so now let's just jump to the play, which is actually very important because this is your last animal and the last animal is very important. Um, so how do you, let's just start with play in general, like um, DEOE. Um, when are you in that state? Like, when do you, when does it actually activate? Hmm. I think when nothing else works out. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, like traveling, for example, like me and my husband went to Europe and uh, our plane got canceled like three times and we ended up in Paris and it's like, sure, that sounds theoretically good. But first of all, well, we really didn't like Paris. And then, uh, and then we got, and then the actual airport is not in, in access to Paris. Like it's just concrete and like parking lot. So you can't actually do anything. So it's like at first, like with play less, it's like, I have to have everything in control. So when everything's going right, I'm like, okay, we need this and this, and we have to be there this time. Like, and I'm kind of like, focused but then when everything goes wrong like oh we're just stranded here and we won't get to work on time like we're gonna miss our jobs and like all this and we're just like you know what this is hilarious <laughs> and you know it's just like starting to let go it's like wow we didn't have control anyway and so it starts to become really fun it's like that's when i feel like i can let go i'm just like haha nobody knows where we are where we are we're in another country and we can do whatever we want and like <laughs> because i don't know we didn't have a plan and suddenly it's like thrilling Whereas like when things are like in control, I don't feel comfortable letting go or feeling those things because we have things to do. Hmm. So it, it takes a lot of chaos for me to like actually let go. Wow, that's interesting because that also lines up with your overlay. It's like you let go of the middle manager and then you go into like a more like, like oh, this is actually kind of fun uh, mode, I guess. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. But typically it's like, if I go to a party, I'm not going to have fun. I'm just going to stare at everybody else having fun and be like, Hmm, I wonder how they can justify that. Or like, <laughs> Hey, he's dancing with that girl and he's married or something like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I'm always looking at like, are, are people just okay? Like, I guess play seems very dangerous to me. It's just like, how do people feel so comfortable? doing what they feel like they want to do when there are so many consequences that could happen or, and this is like an identity thing too, just like betraying their identity. It's like, how could they say their one thing and then end up acting like another thing? It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know. That to me just seems really threatening. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if there's some of the, um, like, assuming if you are social type three, um, there's the demon friends and like the responsibility. So that's like doubly um, letting go of um, personal specialized and then the achievement side with the flex. So hmm. I see like yeah. an overlap there and there's supposed to be an overlap apparently. Um, between our like last function and our last animal and our demon uh, social needs. So, mm. Yeah. The overlap. Huh. Yeah, I definitely fully acknowledge like the demon friends thing. Because it's like, if you're doing something wrong, see, ya, I guess like, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. And it's not that I it's, I wouldn't say it's like, I'm okay with like, being friends with those people, but it's like, if they want me to join in or if they want me to agree, it's like, well, can't do that. Bye. <laughs> so mm. that I'm way more loyal to what I believe is true and right than 
a person. And to me, that's like how I care about people. It's like, if, if I can be a role model to that person and show them something healthy, then it's like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I guess. And, and they can take it or leave it. And that's their choice. I see. So there's like a big commitment to your TI um, and like your, how do I say that? Your, like your TI identity, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huge commitment. I just try to factor people in, in the first place, I guess. It's like almost like a shortcut <laughs> instead of like feeling what they feel and being at risk of compromising what I think is right. Uh, I try to have a TI that includes everyone. So, mm. and if it ends up not in some way, it's a huge problem for me. So, and that's my tidal wave. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So like to achieve FB, you try to do more TI. That yep. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Huh. It's like damage control for feeling bad feelings from other people. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. So, all right. Now on the NF play, like, does it ever, like, do you ever do it with strangers or do you mostly keep it for like special situations when it comes out by itself? Um, I think it's like, I think it's extremely rare that I use play. And part of play for me is like showing anger, for example, mm -hmm. because anger to me is something, I mean, it's an extremely strong emotion I have. And it's also one where I can think unfair things. And that is not something I can show people because I always want to be fair and correct. So if I show someone, if I rant in front of someone and say things I don't mean, to me, that's play because that is me letting my emotions and myself do like go with the flow. And yeah, it's, it's, and I guess I perceive that it's a way to be more intimate with the person I'm with. Like I'm showing them something because to me, that's more vulnerable than sadness or anything else. It's like, cause to me, it's like, Sadness is easy because people feel bad for you. People don't feel bad for you when you're angry. <laughs> like they're, they more have like a defense. They feel defensive or they'll be like, oh, that person's a jerk or wow. They're like, I don't know. Those are my insecurities of like, if people see me angry, they're seeing my irrational, like, I guess, threatening side. And maybe that's also just because of my family being all DE. It's like, they're taking it personally, so they can't see my pain, basically. So it's hard for me to show pain to people, and it just sadness isn't it. Hmm. That's interesting. I've also heard the thing where feminine feeling tends to express more with sadness, and the masculine feeling tends to express more with anger. So I think maybe that may be a thing like maybe anger is like a demon for feminine feeling and uh sadness is a demon for masculine feeling maybe yeah um, just a guess um yeah so yeah i mean like um okay all right all right so let's let's jump into the enneagram section here um so you are a 163 uh, with a 259 overlay and you are self-press social. So um, let's jump into the self-press one more directly this time. Um, you did mention a lot of, about it already. So if there's anything you have not shared yet, this is a good time. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's pretty much it. All my hobbies and the things that make me feel grounded and centered are the self pres one things, just things that feel righteous, but also that righteousness being informed by the body a lot more than I realized. Like, I didn't realize that was a thing until Enneagram. 
I thought that my TI was as objective as I could possibly be, I guess. Like I thought that I was actually considering every option ever. But I realized through Enneagram that, oh, I was relying on my body to tell me what felt right. And then I was backtracking to explain that with TI. So my body made the conclusion and my TI made the rationalization. So now it's like, oh, all my like feelings about what the truth is or what religion is or anything like that is all from my body in the end. Even my phobias and things that like I developed like just from being really religious growing up, it was all like a body defense. And part of the things that I clung to religiously were body defenses. It was like, oh, this this helps me to feel protected. So that's why I held on to it like I did. Can you explain the body thing a bit? Because uh, core one's extremely rare. It's a very rare type in the Enneagram. I think it's even more rare than eight. Um, and so the from what I've heard, tell me if this is wrong, um, the core ones they feel like there's this rod like going up their like a like up their spine basically and if it's like off they have to like do something in the environment to bring it back to the center is that is that even something you experience yeah i would say that's what pride feels like <laughs> and pride's not necessarily a good thing but it's although i mean it's a it's a motivator to meet your ideals so it's like a, a lot of idealism, especially being intuitive and having a clear picture of something that isn't in the present. And then it's like the strong desire to be in alignment, like on the path to that ideal. So those things will, will make me, it's like, I want to do things that I could show the world and be proud of. Like, I don't want to feel shame. So it's like, and that was one really hard thing about me being a teacher, because one thing they do is like, they show you all these videos about like, oh, you're a teacher 24 seven. So you shouldn't show like drinking on Facebook and stuff. And to me, it's like, whoa, that's my growth area. Like I need to be doing that stuff. Cause one problem I have is I try to be a role model nonstop to the point where I don't know how to live. Like I can't listen to myself. I can't relax or have fun. And now I'm in a profession that's like trying to encourage me always like being perfect because everyone's watching. And it's like, I already feel that way. Like I felt my whole life, like everyone's watching and I need to be exactly who I need to be. And I always thought of like the quote, like character is who you are when no one's looking. And it's like, I took that so seriously. And so, yeah. Have you ever questioned if your three is secondary? Hmm. Because what you just said there is very, like, not hard last. Uh, hard last is more like they don't feel like people are watching enough. Um, like the when you have three high, it's like the cameras are always on you. So. Yeah, I guess I I don't feel so competent in the system that I would, that I have thought of been confident enough to like question it, but it's definitely possible. I did kind of rationalize my like having body, mind, then heart, because it kind of made sense with my TI first and FE last to me, like my values being, I don't know. It's like I, my TI leads the values, I guess. And then my mind just kind of bridges the gap of like trying to explain why that's okay. I guess. So that's like how I saw it, but I could definitely see how, because I could rationalize it the other way too. Like if they typed me th the other way, I would have rationalized that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's very fitting either way. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing is, yeah, like you said earlier, like it's very, it fits very well with both types. Mm. Yeah, I definitely see the type three in me, but also it's not as like, serious as like i don't know i think i have a type three friend who's like always working on things and she's always recording how much she's doing and she feels like i don't know 
not important when she's not doing those things. And I don't think it's that extreme for me. I feel like I deserve to be here no matter what, even if I am useless, I guess. So I have this like fight for that, but it's like, oh, sorry, I didn't do my best. I'm just me, like fight me, I guess. <laughs> it's like, cause I know I care and I trust that I care. And if I balanced something, like for example, I have a part-time job and it's like, I used to be really serious about those, but now I'm like, I have a priority and this is not it. And I don't get paid enough to care that much. So mm. yeah, so now I kind of like let go of perfectionism in those ways. Interesting. And so, okay, so let, let's just move along to your six fix. Um, so with six, um, it, it's uh, they've said like if you have six later in your stack, like second or third, it's very different than core six. Core six is its own thing, but um, six tends to they like pick sides, they create sides like this is my side, this is your side, and then like they they can be very bold about like presenting their side. Um, it's also seen as like um adopting a thought structure that already existed so like they may gather arguments and like use those but that came from somewhere else and that's why it's attachment um in the head center so other than mm -hmm. what i explained but also with that uh how do you relate to six yeah so six wants to be sure of themselves and know what's true as the mind type and they kind of freak out when they don't know what's true i definitely relate to that <laughs> so it's a huge like uh, existential crisis for me when i don't have a theory going on so yeah and then i also know when i have i when I am rational, I have very nuanced opinions where I'm like, this applies to this context, this applies to this context. But when I'm in real life and people say things that are threatening, like or aggressive, let's say, I accidentally start to get more extreme, like just on accident. And it's just like a reactive like pushback. Like if you're gonna be extreme, I need to get heard too. So I'm gonna, it's like my opinion, it, my opinion doesn't change, but I start to say things out loud that weren't as strong as my real opinion is. And to me, that's like the six reaction, like the, just like the, whoa, like back up, like, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm like using my thoughts to push because I am feminine sensory. I'm not gonna fight anybody physically, but like, <laughs> I, it's like my masculine TI in combo with the like six reaction. It's just like, get out of my spot. Now I do think you're this crazy, like <laughs> kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, and I start to get polarized and then I feel like, wow, I'm such a robot getting polarized by other people pushing hard, but it's like really hard for me to maintain my nuance and like in certain situations. Hmm. I see. I see. So there can be like a push and pull between allowing the six to come out and trying to make it more um, appropriate to your one and three fix. Yeah, I think I honestly am not at the point in development where I understand the appropriate expression of my six. It seems uh, because it is a reactive type. I'm like, why do I want that? I want to be steadfast. And that's like my uh, five dream <laughs> it's like it's like i almost want to be detached so i can just always say what's right but then that also is an indicator that you're not you're not relying on anyone and they're not relying on you um, it's almost like you want to be vulnerable to a degree like you want to feel people like i don't know or at least i do like i want to feel connection to people and if i'm perfectly objective and always am it's at the cost of caring what they think and i do want to care about what they think because I want to be checked and balanced. I want to be part of like humanity, I guess. Mm. So it's like be like the six coming out as part of my reminder that I am involved and I care. But then 
I can't stay true to my thoughts. So it's a really frustrating situation. I see. Uh, the other thing too is um, there is an interaction between all the numbers in your type. So if six is the only reactive, there's definitely going to be a conflict between multiple parts and the six by itself. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a thing to consider in terms of why you can feel like out of place and something that's hard to integrate into the whole because it's mm -hmm. it's on like it's itself against everything else in your type. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it just feels like the outburst part. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, what was that? <laughs> Yeah, huh. So that's interesting that you have one of those. Okay, so. Hmm. All right, so then now we have your three fix, which is uh, another competency type. So one is competency, and then three is also competency. So this doubles up your competency. Um, and competency is like, it's very neutral, um, a little bit robotic, like very like, like this is just the answer. It's not positive or negative. Um, so how do you, how are you relating to the three uh, competency side of it in particular? Yeah, I don't think I necessarily pursue achievement for the sake of it, but when I am involved, uh, partly because of my masculine consume, I'm just like interested. And sometimes that just ends up with me robotically doing way more than I can actually handle. So like when I was a teacher, I um, like it was my first year teaching and I was already suffering and like I can't go to work the next day I can't go to work the next day like I didn't have any support it was a title in school but then uh, they're like hey we need a soccer coach and I'm like oh I love soccer <laughs> like I'm gonna be a soccer coach and then I started doing my teach Gwinnett program which is our program for certification which was extremely intense and I'm like oh cool I'm learning about teaching and then and then I was doing my master's on top of that it was outrageous it was like like I was doing so much and then I knew I wasn't going to be a teacher after like three years. So I wasn't going to use the certification, but I completed it anyway. Like, why did I do that? Like no reason. I was just like, I have to finish what I start. And it was just like an addiction to just be like, look how productive I am. Like it felt good. It's almost like being at the gym and like, I don't know, <laughs> it's just like working out your brain. So and I just wanted to know everything and learn everything. And also I knew it made people proud, like my family, they were so proud of me. And I'm like, I don't know why d decreasing your mental health and like going insane makes people proud of you, but it does. So, <laughs> so like part of me is like, oh, you know, it would be healthy to do less, but also I get all these like gold stars when I do it. <laughs> so I care more about the gold stars. I didn't really necessarily feel the stress. I definitely felt like, oh, my brain's slowing down. Oh, like my brain's not working, but it wasn't like hard. Um, it was kind of just like, it's just what I did. <laughs> mm. And I wouldn't not do it again, even though that was extremely ridiculous. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so there's this thing about heart last that they can have like these tidal waves kind of, of like realizing their true emotions. Where like it, it all hits up once and there's like this heartfelt like this heart space like feeling where you're speaking from true emotions um so that's associated with any of the heart last uh do you relate to that i think it's extremely extremely rare for me to feel strongly um uh, it's like i have a lot of uh passion a lot of passion but feeling like I don't know for myself it's like all my passions about my ideals and pushing for that so anything that's not related to that or sabotages that is not is extremely repressed so it, i do think i have like episodes where it comes out but even when it does it's so fleeting that i can maintain what i'm doing even if it's not if even if it doesn't feel like right because I'm not really aware of it. It's not like it's itching at me or scratching at me. Like, I don't even know. So usually I'm pretty in line with what I'm doing, and that's what gives me my confidence. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So it's like, yeah. 
it's not very strong feelings. And I wonder if that's because you have the three wing two uh, versus three wing four. Three wing four is a lot more in touch with like the deep suffering, the dark emotions. Um, yeah. So I, th I think that may be part of it. Like it comes out more as like a, maybe like, yeah, more like surface level, like passion, like something not so like intense, like suffering. Yeah, it's like a, I do feel like a teapot that just like lets out the steam in like all areas of my life, like definitely have frustration a lot and anger, but it's never something that I feel like is because of me. It's like because of what's wrong with the world, not me, <laughs> or it's not me suffering because suffering is still, uh. it's something you can't fix, but anger is a very uh, motivating emotion it's one that makes you want to do something about it so it's like one that i allow because it helps me fight for what's good that's a very good point because the um like the three wing four it's pointed at the self it's like this is my you know dark feelings but then three wing two is like it's outwards it's positive outwards so it's also associated with being like a coach like a life coach, mm -hmm. a guidance counselor type of person. Do you relate to like giving people advice and doing kind of what uh, Tony Robbins does because he's a third wing too? Like that Absolutely. Kind of That's what I love about being a counselor. They come looking for that and I'm like, perfect, a situation where people are looking for it. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely I always oh. feel like I'm the one bringing in the ideas and it's like if people want to listen or not. And I'm interested if other people are as passionate as me, but to me, that's pretty rare. It's like, I would be enamored if somebody wanted to tell me about their specialty, but I don't meet that many people like that. So I'm like, well, there's a void here, so I'm going to fill it. <laughs> so. Interesting. Okay. Uh, lastly, we'll touch on your overlay, the 259 overlay. Um, this is, they gave it a horrible name. They called it the spineless saint, um, but it's actually a very intellectual um try type it's the it's like that intellectual that's like very like i'm giving you a service like constantly answering questions like endless knowledge in a kind way like that kind of thing do you feel that coming out at certain points um and is it like obvious to you um that that, that you have that overlay hmm I don't know if I understand the overlay, like, uh, like the system's perspective of the overlay well enough, I think. Um, it's kind of, I kind of think of it like an alter ego. It's like, it's a, it's another agenda different from your core type, but it's not like, it's not a huge agenda. It's like, the, like once in a while you're like, oh yeah, I have this other like way of seeing the world in myself and I have this plan to do with that part of myself but it's not so big that it's like your entire you know definitely your core tri-type is probably like 75 like 75 percent and like your overlay is like a small 25 percent or something of your whole agenda i would say hmm i guess like altruism like um uh volunteer work i guess things like that it's like in the end i'm going to prioritize what's sustainable for me I'm not going to give more than I can handle, but if I can find a mutual place, I, I think I've kind of like integrated that better than I used to. Cause I used to do a lot of volunteer work at church and stuff and I'm not religious anymore like that, but uh, it was a good outlet for me to like be selfless. But then I was like, you know what? Being too selfless isn't sustainable because then you can't, you feel like you don't have enough yourself. And so, I've tried to find this 50 50 balance and for me that's like races like because i love to run and it's supporting a cause so i can support the cause and feel good about that um like another example is like i'm not going to be vegetarian because i like meat like that would <laughs> like delay my quality of life enough that it's like i want i don't know i'm okay with animals dying but i don't want to see it because that's very sad <laughs> but it's like so it's like i care but not enough to lower my 50 percent or what i i guess i perceive it that way the numbers are arbitrary but i'm like trying to find a 50 percent of like what can i give um that's makes me feel proud 
but I also am taking care of myself and what I enjoy so that I like feel excited to be alive, basically. I see what you're saying. So like you try to meet, meet it halfway with your more rigid um, roles. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a way of integrating play too. Cause like in the past I would have considered my, the races as selfish. Cause it's like, look how much time I'm putting towards this when I could have actually been handing out food, like to, to poor people. It's like, there's so much more efficient things or some of these are nuanced and, I, and like certain causes don't deserve as much time versus other causes. And it's like, I could go into all that, but it's like, I'm not here to save the whole world. I'm just going to use the energies I have and see how it overlaps. Hmm. So, and then mental health is my passion. So it's like, that's where I'm giving to, but I'm giving in a way that's sustainable for me because I love it. So. Oh, very interesting. Uh, I do see how like you try to give back a lot with the 259. Um, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's double rejection. Uh, rejection is like giving an offering. It's like you have to take this specific offering. It can't be anything else. It has to be the specific one. So the 259, I would imagine, is like you being more focused on get, like making sure somebody gets something from you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I think my regular program gives things that people don't want a lot or aren't ready for. So hmm. it's like maybe a little bit of checking in with the play and the ping back and like, oh, this makes somebody happy and I should care about that, even if it's not directly related to health or I don't know. Hmm. I see. Hmm. All right. Well, do you have anything you want to promote or? Not necessarily. I'm just really glad to um, learn more about the interaction of the two systems. And I think it's really cool. Yeah. So I, I will say, I do think the TI is in fact connected to your core one. Uh, that was my, my tentative hypothesis at the very beginning. Um, so that, that was very interesting to discover and just connect your type in general. Um, so thank you so much for, for, coming on here um so thank you all right well thanks so much for having me i appreciate it